What's up everybody, it's Ryan Donnelly from RyanD.com. Check out CalmSupport.com for stress, relaxation, immune and sleep support, and RyanD.com for free addiction coaching powered by donations. Um, products also available on Amazon. They said that. All right, so um, I, know I haven't been wearing shirts like this. I had a meeting I just got done with not too long ago, and um, I wanted to do another video because it was a topic um, we, I had a conversation during the meeting, uh, actually after the meeting, um, with somebody, and a lot of people don't know I have a YouTube channel, okay? Um, that might surprise some of you, but um, someone did follow my channel and they asked me to talk about something. So, um, the one thing I wanted to talk about was <laughs> when you have some time in recovery and things start getting a little stagnant. All right, so like you've heard of the pink cloud effect. Pink cloud effect usually happens really soon after you first get clean. Um, you'll have these moments of extreme euphoria and you feel like the, that life can't get any better and everything's perfect and pristine. And then all of a sudden life goes back to normal. Okay, so you don't have like this like honeymoon phase anymore with recovery. <clears throat> and that's when it gets hard for a lot of people because, you know, it's not... It's not like ice cream sandwiches and flip flops anymore. You know, it's 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 real life, and you don't feel fantastic. You feel normal. Okay, so once you have you get past the pink cloud effect, you have some time. You start getting comfortable with yourself. It's important that if you don't like the direction that you know things are going, you need to check yourself and just you know take a like one of the steps is take a more inventory of yourself. Take a step back, look at what is important to you, and why you think you're heading the direction you're, you're heading. What is causing you to go that way that you're unhappy with? Because just because you're in recovery doesn't mean you're going to be happy. And people that have time will, will vouch for this. Plenty of people have a lot of time, but they're still dry drunks or, you know, they're still pulling dopamine moves even though they're clean. And... It's because they haven't really worked on the mentality that got them to using in the first place. What caused them to find an alternate source of happiness, okay? Um, why are they drowning out their emotions? What's causing them to go search for something to alter their frame of mind? Now, once you, um, once you figure that out, obviously you'll be a lot happier. But a lot of people go through the phases or they'll go through all the steps and they'll realize, like, shit, I'm still unhappy. Why am I not happy? And that's when it's important to take a step back and look at your life from a grand scheme, okay? And try to figure out why you're not where you want to be, okay? And <clears throat> I didn't, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really have an issue with this. Um, most things I talk about, it's from experience. This is something that, for the most part, I was not feeling, okay? Because my life sucked so bad when I used. It was like, I can't even put in the words how bad it was. Um, I, mean, I, I mean, I had to plan suicide for a reason. I mean, I had no will to live anymore. And that's coming from somebody be that before alcohol... And, and drugs was happy-go-lucky all the time. I mean, I was always shit eating grin on my face. I grew up the, the nickname Joker because my smile was big. I was always smiling. So I went from being a happy person to absolutely destroyed and not even knowing who I was. That when I got clean, I had that glimpse in the beginning of what it was like to be me before. Just a glimpse. And it gave me this hunger of like, oh, I want to feel like that every day, I want to be like that person, I want to be better than the person I used to be. And obviously, <clears throat> the reason I believe I became a better person was because I lived both sides. Okay, I lived a happy lifestyle and then I lived in hell. Okay, but learning, from, happy was okay, but learning from the hell time of my life has been the most priceless time of my life. I, I still chalk that up as being the most important time of my life because it gave me a different perspective on how things can go if you're not all there, okay? 
So that's why I'm not 100% against medication. Some people I know are just like, no medication, no whatever. I don't take any medication for anything. Because when I was put in the short-term mental health facility, I was put in the loony bin because I was suicidal. I saw somebody <clears throat> who was off their meds. So a lot of people go into this hospital because they come off their meds, because they start feeling better. They don't think they need it anymore. Well, when you come off your meds, there was chemical imbalances and they, you know, are not functioning like a normal human being. So this woman comes in with a shaved head. She shaved her head. She was in pajamas. And she walked up and down the hallway for 48 hours straight. And I'm not kidding. Didn't talk a word. She was mute. And now I was in the short-term care facility for six days. She came in, I guess it was about maybe 12 hours after I did. So I witnessed the whole thing. And I was scared shitless of her. I thought she was possessed. God's honest truth. Okay. Now, I'm talking to the psychiatrist in one of my, uh, my sessions with him. And he was asking me like how, how I'm feeling, how I feel about being in there. Because he knew, he saw the change in me from the moment I came in. Like I had a will to live. Uh, but it was a liability reason they put me in there because I did have a planned suicide. And he asked me straight up, he's like, how do you feel about being in this area with these people? Because I was put in with the mental health and drugs. It was, it's called double trouble. So you have a mental health issue and you have a drug, uh, substance abuse problem. <clears throat> but then they had just substance abuse and I would go to meetings with them and then go back to the psych ward, right? <clears throat> But it was one of the most fascinating things I've ever experienced because I saw what medication can do to people that really need it. Because this woman, by the time I was leaving, day six, about day five, actually the day before, she was sitting down in the common area speaking and talking with everybody like completely normal. Like nothing had ever happened. And it blew me away. I was like, holy shit. This lady I thought was possessed, okay? Just was off her meds and was already starting to act completely normal again that quickly after being put back on them. And that really floored me. Now I know I went off, like I've been doing lately, going off in the right field, but the bottom line is, <laughs> I didn't have the issue with, you know, having to check myself and not being happy in recovery because I had it so bad. I made, I didn't have it so bad. I made it so bad for myself. And um, I was able to have, like I say, little victories every single day and it got me more motivated and more pumped to, to wake up the next day. And then I started to you know, share my story and people were giving me feedback and I was getting a lot of good feedback and then negative feedback. But I didn't even care what anybody thought. You know what I mean? Because I felt like a completely different person and I really truly felt like I had a second chance at life so it is okay completely if you are not happy in recovery okay but it's important for you to not go back to using you have to figure out why okay what what is not right right now now there could be a million variables involved I mean you could have financial issues that no one you know if you're in extreme financial uh, crisis I mean it's hard for anybody to feel okay I mean you could be completely stoned cold sober and never had an issue in your life, but finances, it's stressful. Stress is the number one killer in this world. So any type of stress that's put on you, it's natural not to be happy. But if everything, all your ducks are in a row, and you're in recovery, everyone expects you to be happy, but you're not, then you have to take a step back and figure out, okay, what, what's not right here? Is it my relationships? Am I not fulfilled? Um, Am I not fulfilling my own time? Am I bored a lot? Because the only reason you're bored is if you're a boring person. You can always fill your time with things to, you know, spark your mind. Write a book or something. Um, but you have to take a step back and figure out what's causing that. All right? <clears throat> ten, eh, close to ten minutes. So I, I went off a little bit, but uh, I like to share little stories here and there from my early recovery. Because uh, that was a fascinating time. I mean, I could write a book seriously on just those six days of being in there um, because it, it had such an impact on me. And there is a movie <clears throat> that I watched years back that reminded me a lot of my, my, uh, my time in the mental health facility because it's a Zach Galifianakis movie, the guy from The Hangover. <clears throat> he's, he's Greek. 
and my wife, you guys all know, my wife is very Greek. But anyway, um, he has a big beard and, and big hair. And the, my roommate, when I was in the mental health facility, had big beard and big hair. And he was actually an inventor of toys. <clears throat> and it's just, that movie was so close to my situation, minus the whole love in that movie. I forget what it was called. But uh, if you IMDb Zach Galifianakis, it's a film about him being in a mental health facility, a psych ward. <clears throat> And it was just, it was great to watch the movie because I had so much, I could relate so much to it. But, uh, quick story. When I first got into the room with him, um, mind you, when I first came in there, I was extremely upset. All right. I was not happy that they were putting me in there. I didn't think I belonged there at the time. Now I know I did. But when I first walked in, he looked at me, he was sitting at a desk. Each room had two beds, completely bland. There's nothing in there because you're on suicide watch. You can't even have strings, draw strings, nothing. So no shoelaces and slip-ons. <clears throat> and he's sitting at a desk with a book. And he's in the far corner of the room when you walk in. So his back is towards me. He hears me come in. He turns his shoulder and just looks at me like this. And starts dying laughing at me. Hysterical, almost pissing his pants. And I'm going, holy shit, this motherfucker's crazy. Right? I'm in here with some kind of crazy axe murderer. He's dying laughing. He's like, you're crazy, man. You're crazy. And I just I started cursing him off, telling him to shut the F up and everything else. But then I went and laid in bed. And he was right. He was 100% right. I belonged there at that time. I was not right in the head. I was completely out of it. I mean, the thought of actually trying to take my own life was... A good idea at that time so he was 100% right and I ran into him years later at a 7-eleven in my hometown and he did not remember me because I, I remember him never forget his face in a million years he was standing behind me in a 7-eleven and I turned around and I said hey how you doing and I'm waiting for him to say something looked right for me so I guess that's a good thing for him um, that he could look past that that time but uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm jabbing on now. Anyway, um, check out calmsupport.com for stress, relaxation, immune, and sleep support. And uh, products also on Amazon. And check out ryand.com for uh, free addiction coaching powered by donations. All right, have a good one.